What's up, Force fans, and welcome back to the Star Wars Vault. We're back at it again to discuss all things Mandalorian, who they are, where they come from, and everything you need to know about their culture, their planet, and their history. Now, I imagine for you diehard fans, you probably know a bit about them from the canon, from shows like Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. But there is a lot about this warrior culture that you might have missed. And for everyone who's just learning about them for the first time watching The Mandalorian, we will break it all down. We are going to get into legends and canon, so let's get started. First, I want to thank you guys for watching and remind you to please subscribe to our channel for more awesome Star Wars content in the future. Let's get right into this. So the Mandalorians are a race of people from the planet Mandalore a planet located in the Outer Rim territories. The planet was first conquered by a species called the Tong. They were a humanoid warrior race native to the planet Coruscant. Way before it was the massive city we know today, they shared Coruscant with a human species called the Zell, who after years of war drove the Tong out of Coruscant. They were driven far from Coruscant to the Outer Rim planet of Rune where they remained for thousands of years before a mysterious warrior by the name of Mandalore I who rallied the Tong and eventually led them to the savage world we would know later as Mandalore. The planet was dominated by the mighty Mythosaur. A nice reference to this was dropped in the Mandalorian TV show. The Mythosaur were enormous creatures that ruled the planet until the Tongs and Mandalore I wiped them out. The skull of the Mythosaur became the symbol for the Mandalore, which is the name given now to the ruler of Mandalore, named after Mandalore I, which is also what they named the planet after. After taming the wild planet, the Mandalorians discovered their planet was rich in an extremely rare metal known as Beskar, a term most are familiar with by now. The original word Beskar God was originally the Tong word which means iron skin. Beskar became an essential part of the Mandalorian warmongering culture and is used to make the famous Mandalorian armor we know and love. Beskar gave the Mandalorians a place in the galaxy and made them feared and respected. After the Tong captured the planet, named it Mandalore and became the Mandalorians. They remained there for thousands of years, staying close to home and only conquering worlds in the Mandalorian sector. This sector is a very strategic hunk of space between Coruscant and the Outer Rim territories. Eventually, the Mandalorians decided to continue their conquest outside of the Mandalorian sector, eventually conquering a species known as the Navito. Their conquering victory was so gruesome, the entire species was exterminated and the Mandalorians began a culture of literally worshipping war. Specifically, a destroyer god by the name Cad Herengir, a god who emphasized action and despises sloth. The Mandalorians were so obsessed with the warring culture, it would eventually destroy the planet and force the Mandalorians to move into domed cities. In the legends, there are countless stories of wars and conflicts of the Mandalorians and it would make this video like two hours long. But if this video gets a thousand likes and at least five comments about this, I'll make that video. So we'll continue with the canon stories from here on out and kind of try and tie this all together. Probably one of the most famous canon conflicts we know about, however, the Mandalorian Jedi Wars. The Mandalorian Jedi Wars was essentially a series of conflicts between the Mandalorians and the Jedi Order that culminated in a massive battle on Mandalore, which was the battle that ultimately rendered the planet uninhabitable, resulting in those dome cities we were talking about earlier. This created great change in Mandalore. The warrior clans were exiled to the Moon Concordia, most notably their leader Pre Vizsla, a character played by Jon Favreau in the Clone Wars series. The Mandalorians who stayed on Mandalore were helped by the Republic to establish the Dome Cities. Some Mandalorians fled their world like Clan Wren, which we see in Rebels, and is the clan of Sabine Wren. Despite their warrior culture, Mandalore did experience an era of peace prior to the events of Phantom Menace. Mandalore was engaged in civil war that ends with Satine Kreese beginning the rule as Duchess of Mandalore. 
This storyline we see largely in the Clone Wars TV series, so I won't get too much into detail, but briefly. We know that Duchess Satine abhorred violence and was a pacifist, which was a very controversial belief system for Mandalorians to say the least. Despite that, Mandalore prospered under her rule. But not all Mandalorians were happy about the new rule, and our friends on Concordia, under the rule of Pre Vizsla, formed Death Watch, a terrorist group that would attack and cause problems on Mandalore. Working with Count Dooku, Death Watch was attempting to draw the Republic into war, the war that the Mandalorians desired. The plan failed, and they fled the system to become mercenaries. Later in the series, with the help of Darth Maul, Death Watch takes control of Mandalore. But when Vizsla tries to betray Darth Maul, he is killed. Eventually, Darth Maul was captured by Darth Sidious, but not before killing Satine to spite his mortal enemy, Obi-Wan Kenobi. But his capture led to him losing control of Mandalore, and Bo-Katan Kreese, the sister of Duchess Satine and former member of Death Watch, was named Regent of Mandalore. Until the events of Revenge of the Sith, when the Saxon clan and Gar Saxon was given control of Mandalore under the Imperial rule. We do see Mandalore in the canon again in Star Wars Rebels, after Sabine Wren finds the Darksaber on Dothamir. Her, Ezra Bridger, and Kanan Jarrus return to Cronus, the home of her clan and mother Ursa Wren, to enlist their help in the rebellion. Ursa, however, betrays them and turns them over to Gar Saxon. But instead of crediting Clan Wren, Saxon decides to eliminate them for harboring a fugitive, and the battle culminates in an epic lightsaber battle between Sabine and Gar Saxon, where she defeats Saxon, but after sparing him, he tries to kill her and is immediately killed by Sabine's mother, Ursa Wren. Sabine stays on Cronus to help her clan deal with the aftermath, helping her mother lead the Mandalorians and wielding the Darksaber which we know is a symbol to the Mandalorians as something held by the leader of Mandalore. A civil war broke out once again. Eventually Sabine, along with the help of bo katan Kreese, helped defeat the Saxon clan and their superweapon named the Duchess, an energy weapon created by Sabine while she was in the Imperial Academy. This weapon was designed to target Beskar armor and superheat it, killing whoever was wearing it. This would render Mandalorians ineffective, and the Saxon clan planned to use this to rule and control all of Mandalore for the Empire. Sabine and Bo-Katan Kreese destroy the weapon, ensuring that it can never be used again. After the battle, Sabine turns the Darksaber over to Bo-Katan and the clans Vizsla, Ren, Rooks, Eldars, and the Kreeses all pledge their loyalty to her. Now this is where we get a little outside the story. I'm going to go based on what I think is going to happen. So according to bo when she was given the Darksaber, she said the Empire would be coming for Mandalore with everything they had. What we do know is that there was an Imperial Purge of Mandalore at some point. This was mentioned in the Mandalorian TV show more than once. So along with similar themes and legends, I believe the Empire goes to Mandalore and wipes them out draining the planet of all the resources, Beskar being number one. That forces the remaining Mandalorians to retreat into hiding and creates a deep hatred of the Empire. That's what I get from the Mandalorian show and it seems to make the most sense for the future of the canon. All that being said, there's plenty more stories and legends including Boba Fett becoming the Mandalore, but that's yet to be seen so we'll leave this video off right here. The Mandalorian history is vast and detailed and could really take up countless videos. I encourage anyone to read some of the legends and I'm super excited to see what happens next for the warrior race. Thank you so much for watching you guys and please make sure to comment on any future videos you want to see about the Mandalorian or any other Star Wars content in the future. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you are notified right away when we come out with new Star Wars videos. Thank you guys again for watching this video and please keep coming back. 
We love you guys. May the force be with you always. And I hope that you learned everything you wanted to know about the Mandalorians and their history. We'll see you guys in the next one.